What's good, folks? Welcome to Jump Off Live presents Anything But, the interview series where we talk to celebrities about anything but <clears throat> what makes them famous. For the inaugural episode of Anything But, we have the current co-host of Locked On Bulls podcast and former NBC Sports Chicago Bulls outsider, Mr. Matt Peck. Now, Matt, here's your chance to tell our millions of fans. Yeah, you know, this is the first episode, but I mean, we actually do have millions of fans. Um, in our minds, but uh, you can tell our millions of fans uh, who you are and what you're about, sir. Jeremy and everybody else, Johnny, Jeff, Dave, thanks so much for having me, guys. Uh, I am honored and humbled uh, to be your guest. I will immediately, however, counter on uh, the definition of celebrity. Uh, I am not a celebrity. <laughs> you but... see, right? Are you the wrong Matt Peck? <laughs> uh, I, I mean, there are several. I think there's a Canadian field hockey player named Matt Peck who's fairly Ooh. famous. So, Ooh. you know, he and I have been battling it out on Wikipedia for the last couple of years. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, I guess uh, for the last several years, I've become somewhat known, at least around those who love uh, and care about Chicago sports, for talking about Chicago sports, whining about the Bulls and the Bears and the Cubs, the Blackhawks on Twitter. And uh, for some reason, people have seemed to give a shit about my opinions. And uh, for that, I am truly grateful. <laughs> oh, no doubt. No doubt, man. Well, we, we are definitely glad to have you on, um, you know, the first episode of anything. But so, I mean, this is something we're going to try to keep going and, uh, you know, building up as we go. So we're, we're definitely glad to have you on, man. Um, so I, I, I got to say, work. I love the idea for this show, too. Um, yeah, I am so excited to talk to you guys about anything other than sports because that's all I do all day, every day. Yeah, wow. and I, I think that's the that's the whole hook, man. Like I, I feel like you as a person and anybody else that you know that we end up having on the show, like you know, you guys are people. You're not just a bulls bot that talks about bullshit and bulls all the time. Like I, right. I, I'm I'm really interested to see how you answer some of the questions we throw at you because you know we got some doozies for you, man. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm ready, dude. Play it All on right. me. All right, so here's how it's going to work. We're going to ask Matt some questions, like I said, and they will be about anything but, uh, name, anything but the Chicago Bulls or basketball. Uh, we want to get to know Matt the person and not Matt the Bulls guy. So um, let me kick it off. This isn't an official question, but this is the first question that I sort of thought of. So um, you're in a dark alleyway, man, and for whatever reason, you know, two guys run up on you, Matt. Like, I don't know if they got guns, but they looking pretty shady. You know, they, they not wearing masks. It's COVID season and they not wearing masks, bro. Mm. Um, who would you like to have in your corner? And of the, of, the, of the people I want you to choose from, I want you to pick from your co-hosts that you have for your different shows. So Big Dave Watson, <laughs> uh, Jordan Malley, or John Sabine. You got to pick one. Only one, and you got to explain why you would pick that person. Ooh. Man, th that is a tough, tough question, <laughs> but I think I have an answer for you. Um, all right, all right. No offense to Sabine, I love the kid, but he's basically a human made of twigs. He's <laughs> six foot two, and he weighs a hundred pounds soaking wet. Yikes. I don't think you would help me in a dark alleyway with some strangers. I'm ruling him out. Okay. Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan, great kid, but you know he's he's like five eight, five nine. You know, we just saw what happened to Nate Robinson in the ring, right? I love Nate Rob, but <laughs> turns out turns out size matters. So <laughs> as That's what as saying. much as I know that Big Dave, over the two years of our friendship, is so much a lover and not a fighter. That guy has like he is so anti confrontation. He has not a mean bone in his body. But I feel like with all the hate that lives within my soul, I could get enough out of him to give him, like, a quick second of Hulk. And he's a big dude. So, like, I feel like he and I, if I could really ignite that fire within him with my hate in my soul, I could get, like, happy, loving Dave to shut down for just enough time for us to defend ourselves. So I'm taking mm -hmm. big Dave. Okay. So he'll, okay. He'll, okay. He'll, okay. I mean, uh, mercy, personally, right? personally, I would have liked to. I would have picked Tavon. I feel like he got like he got crazy like, shit going on in his head. So like he would he would be able to really do some shit, man. Like I, I feel like he would do he would do some shit. I think Dave would be like the first draft pick, but my sleeper pick would be Savine. Jordan. I love the man, but I don't I don't really think he can fight. 
I really don't. I mean, like, I would pick me last, just you know, of all four of us, for the record. <laughs> Yourself, huh? <laughs> yeah. Now, see, I, I'm six foot four, but I just curl up into a ball. I am not a fighter at all. My idea with this is to eventually get Dave and uh, John and Jordan on the show, too. So maybe we see how they answer everything. Tell them I'm sorry if any of them are offended by my answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're we going to kick off the regular round of questions. I believe Jeff A. Smith is up first, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, real uh, quick, Jeff, before you ask Matt his question. So I gather from all of that, <laughs> Matt's answer and JD's answer, that you guys will use Big Dave as a shield. That's what I got. <laughs> a human shield? <laughs> human shield. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I got. I'm no, learning. No, 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 no. I, I I would throw myself in front of a bullet for Big Dave. I'm not oh, using him as a, I'm not using him as a human shield. Yeah, okay, all right, that's a good answer, Matt. You, you Big shot. Dave, Big Dave is a big dude like me, so I feel like you know the whole human shield angle may work. But mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's very nice of you, Matt, to to decide not to do that. Right. Oh, if there's one between me and Dave who deserves to continue living, it's definitely him. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Hey, Matt's going like this right now. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's a humble dude, man. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, it's on me. Yes, sir. It's on you, Joe. All right, Matt. If you could choose one song to play every time you enter a room, what would it be? Um, so I know this is a anything but, and we're not mm -hmm. talking sports. Right. So my, my secretive answer would definitely be Sirius by Alan Parsons Project, a.k.a. the Bulls, like, starting lineup song. Okay. Uh, that, uh, uh, like, nope, nope. You said a bad <laughs> word, sir. You mm. said a bad word. Uh, you got to mm. pick something else. Taking that aside, um, <laughs> I think I, I would have to go with Pressure Drop by Toots and the Maytals. Um, I am a huge Toots fan. I'm a huge reggae fan in general. Uh, just, like... I, I am always about chill vibes. Like, I know I get worked up when I'm talking about sports, but in the in the backside of my life, I always enjoy just being very mellow as much as possible. Um, and, you know, shout out to Tibbert. He just passed away a couple of months ago, RIP. I was lucky enough to see Toots in concert several times throughout my, my young adult years. And that song, Pressure Drop by Toots, is just like, my cheese zone. Anytime I hear it, I just like everything's fine. Let's lower the adrenaline in whatever room and whatever situation we're in. And that's kind of how I just try to interact with my with my friends and every and everybody around me is, um, you know, just being somebody who can ease any kind of situation and make everybody around chill and happy and and cool with whatever the the environment is. And basically, just like lowering the pressure because most of the time in my work life, I'm talking about sports. My job is the exact opposite, and I'm raising right. the pressure all the time. Right, right. right. That's, that's, a that's, that's, that's a great pick, pick. and it's hard, it's to, hard uh, to be angry, be angry and reggae is playing. playing. Oh, it's impossible. Yeah, most definitely. And I mean, I, I feel like you know, it, it, it depending on the situation, reggae would fit. But I mean, there may be some other situations you get into that you might need something a little bit more upbeat. Uh, you know, I'm. I'm I'm just I'm not even gonna go there. All right, uh, who's next? Right. Who's there? I, I, I don't know if you can see. There's a Metallica poster behind me. So like, you know, if I'm getting ready to yell about the Bulls, I just turn on Master of Puppets and I go the complete opposite direction. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. All right. Um, who is up next? Let's let's go with Dave. Dave, what you got, bro? Oh, it's on me. Okay, glad to have you on, Matt. Man, I enjoyed watching you on NBC before. Appreciate that. Hey, no doubt. Uh, I want to ask you going to the 2021 season with Laurie Mark and his contract. Oh, fuck that. I, I didn't mean no, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just fucking with you, man. I'm just fucking with you, man. The power of Christ compels you. <laughs> you see his head spin around two times. Okay, I'm good now. That was a curse word, I know. <laughs> now, um, it's Corona season, so I wanted to ask you what's actually on the mask. Uh, I am so sorry that this is such a lame answer, but I just use those disposable ones. No. <laughs> it's nice yeah. and blank, huh? And, you know, like, I, I've seen all the, like, their ads for, like, decorative masks in my Instagram feed, and everyone's yeah. got all these crazy masks, but, like, 
I, and I know that they're washable, right? Everybody's making these reusable machine washable masks. But mm -hmm. honestly, I wear a mask one time and I smell my own breath and I'm like, trash. <laughs> I'm like, no, no. <laughs> no I don't know how you are living in the reusable mask life right now. I just can't take it. <laughs> so, right, man, yeah. honestly, man, I respect that. So yeah. you're telling me you're, you're the Dame Dash of mask wearers. I mean, Dash I guess. Because they need to wear know, oh, every day. So bad, bad for the planet. I'm throwing away disposable masks. I'm sorry, but <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least you're self-aware. You, you know what I mean? You know, <laughs> you know what you like. I you know what you, just, you know, like. I, I wonder honestly if like the breath mint industry has just skyrocketed mm. over the last eight months as everyone okay. has actually started <laughs> to smell what their own yeah. breath smells like. Potential stock uh, investments, yeah. Right, right. I'm about this. Right now, I've up nine hundred percent since. I'm throwing all my money day. in anything that has the word wintergreen in it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Matt takes off his mask, cussing. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> <Mad at himself. laughs> I mean, that, hey, legit though, that like is a thing, man. Like, and and I mean, like, I'm a person, like, I um. I pride myself on my dental hygiene. You know what I mean? We so I take you. care of my teeth, but other people obviously don't. And I mean, like, you yeah. know, the, the math have been a lifesaver as far as that's concerned, because it's some people that I work with. And I'm so glad that they wear masks. Hopefully that it's been a moment of reflection for them, too, to realize what they've been putting out in the atmosphere all these years. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yeah. Sure, man, it's it's finally coming nice back around. Here, man. Like, you know, <laughs> my webcam's not that good. You look like you got some sparkly teeth over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you know, they're not too shabby. They're not too shabby. <laughs> um, who we got up next? John. Johnny Dangerous. Yeah, what you got, bro? Hey, man. Hey, just that was a great question, Dave. Uh, I've seen some people take off their mask, right, or put it on, right, <laughs> like they go into a, a grocery store. And I swear, <laughs> like an oil filter. When they take it off. <laughs> so, I, I appreciate that, Matt. I appreciate you switching it up. That is sick, hey, man. That's like underwear. You got to change yes. every day. rotation. That's right. And, and you're not doing the thing with the underwear. It's like, oh, I, I'll just wear this pair inside out today yeah, before doing can. laundry. Like, no. Hey, right, right, right. Hey, hey, man, if, you girl, if you have a girlfriend, right, and she gets in your car, and you have some other chick that left her mask, Candy don't even matter anymore. It's about the mask. She's like, who the hell mask is this? Dude. I don't know how that got there. Anyway. <laughs> hey, it's, a, it's, a, it's some dirty mask motherfuckers out there. That's all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dirty maskers. Very. <laughs> hey, before the show started, I had my mask on, man. Out of respect for Matt. I got my mask off. I'm out here raw facing it, man. Hey, by the end of the show, we got to get him uh, his own box of candles. <laughs> You might not know what candoms are, but by the end of the show, you'll, you'll know what they are. It's All a right. special mask sponsored by the Jump Off. We'll, we'll, we'll put you on mask. But anyway, my question okay. to you. <laughs> what race or nationality is Santa Claus? I, I think I think uh, Santa Claus is whatever race or, na whatever race or nationality you want him to be. Mm. Um, being a white kid who grew up in the suburbs... I was very much of the belief as a child that Santa was white because every picture I saw of Santa Claus was a old white guy with a grizzly beard and a big old belly. Um, yeah. But I think it's completely unanswerable. And like, uh, it, it makes me think of, I don't know if you guys watched uh, the show The Office uh, on yeah. NBC, like, you know. Classic, yeah. Sitcom. And one of my favorite, you know, they did like a Christmas episode every year. One of my favorite ones was the, the one where Daryl, the warehouse worker um, wants to be Santa, and Michael's like, "You can't be Santa," and he doesn't say it, but he's clearly applying like, you can't be "Santa because you're black." And girl's like, "Dude, let me wear the Santa hat." <laughs> and it's like this whole big ordeal. So, I mean, yes, I grew up believing that Santa was an old white fat man with a big white beard, but to each his own. Absolutely, man. I respect that, Matt. And where I grew up from. Actually, <laughs> Jeff grew up in that same place too. Santa Claus was the alley mechanic. A <laughs> black dude with a Newport in his mouth that could get any car going, even if it didn't have an engine. Yeah. He could make that thing run. And so to me, 
He had to be Santa Claus because that's just pure magic. I don't know. Yeah, he, he was he was somewhat of a Renaissance man. Okay. Or you ain't got no motive. Hold on now. Like, Boom. I'll, I'll say this. If if Santa w- were the type of dude who smoked Newports, I would have gotten a hell of a lot more cool toys growing up when I was a kid. <laughs> right. Right. That's facts right there. That's for yeah. sure. It also might have took some years off your life, too. So, man. oh, for sure. Hey, that's yeah. a trade off that I'd be willing to take, man. Oh, hey, man. man. <laughs> yeah. Live hard and leave a sexy corpse. That's what I'm all about. Come on, man. Mm. Come on. <laughs> Thank you for asking my question, man. All right. Thank you so for I, asking. Yeah, I think, I think it's on me. Um, I got a, I got a question that, you know, might be a little bit personal, but, you know, with the Jump Off Live audience, we like to get personal, man. Yeah. You like to get personal on that. So um, when you go to the bathroom and you start, you know, unwinding that toilet paper, how many squares do you use, bro? I mean, like, are you a four square person? Are you a five square person? You know, four square is a game. So that might actually, we, we can't talk about that because yeah, you can yeah. talk about game, anything but games. So, I mean, it, well, how many squares do you use, bro? It is a huge spectrum. Like it totally depends. <laughs> it's not like the same number every time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I feel, I feel you. I'm I'm sure you guys have had the experience where you know you're you're doing your business and you realize that at certain moments in time the human body executes what it's supposed to do like perfectly. Yeah, and you're going to wipe and you're like, there's nothing there. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, my I gosh. call it clean getaway. Clean I just getaway. I just took the, I, I call I call them dose poops where because like there's no evidence that there was actually a, a bowel movement. And so sometimes you're like, oh dude, one, I'm good, great. And then sometimes you're like, I'm gonna be here for a while. Yeah, that's gonna be a minute. <laughs> Yep. So it it could be one square or it could be half a roll. It depends on mostly what I ate yesterday. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. Like you, you you're flexible, man, and that, that's right. one thing that I can tell. Even by the way that you answer and you flow with us, like I can tell that you're you're flexible with what you do. But um, you know what? what Adapt if you just, to the situation around you, man. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But <laughs> what, what do you do if you know you just got like that? Uh, you got two squares left, and it's you. You know, you on a six square, seven square, eight square Ooh. poop. So like, what do you do? Those are those are dangerous times. Like I've definitely <laughs> had that, that internal panic yeah, right. where you, like you're trying to ration. You know, like it's like okay, I wash. I my plane crashed. I washed up on a desert island, and I've only got this much food and this much water. But instead, it's like all right, I'm on the john, and I've got like four or five squares of toilet paper left. I got to use this as wisely and efficiently as possible. Absolutely, man. Yep. And that's a horror. Nobody wants to be in that situation, but we've all no, been there. Man. You got no, I, I, I kind of feel like we should end the show on that question, but we won't. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. hey, man, at that point, you got to unleash your inner Jedi, right? You got to you gotta use the Force when you're right. doing stuff like that. I mean, yeah. Because you, you don't want to do that, like, pathetic, like, cry for help, like, hoping that your roommate would be, like, somebody within you shot, like, hey, is somebody on the other side of the door? Is somebody <laughs> throw me some toilet paper? And you got to do, like, the awkward handoff where you only want to open the door a crack because right. you don't want to see anything, but you still got to get the flesh all. Right, let the fumes oh, out. It's awful. It's awful. That's yep, for real, man. Man. Like man. situation, man. Yep, hand me, hand me the TP. Toilet entanglement. Hand me the TP, but uh, only breathe through your mouth. Right. <laughs> you, you don't want to do that thing where, like, you have to like open up like the you know the bathroom trash can that has people's discarded you know tissues and toilet paper. Oh man, desperate times. Oh. All right, like, we, we got to start talking about you know recycling right now. Like, no, you don't want to do that. <laughs> All right, all right. Soiled. <laughs> yep, yep. I'm, I'm glad you got this figured out, Matt. Um, Man, he's he got all answers. We're gonna, we gonna run to Jeff now. You got another question, bro? Yeah, this one's a little bit lighter. <laughs> um, <laughs> no streaks. Yeah, a little bit more PC. <laughs> who, who is the uh, the the biggest role model in your life? Um, I, I wouldn't say that I necessarily have one particular role model. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like there are certain characteristics and, and, and strengths that, that both of my parents have, and I'm certainly very fortunate to have 
two parents who are still happily married after nearly 50 years and wow. they both love me and support me and like it's the greatest greatest gift of my life but there are certain parts of each of their personalities that i hate and it's like you know, there are certain things that i pulled from each of my parents uh that i find to be uh helpful as as i've grown um and not only them but other friends other family members uh people that i meet and like you know some of my role models i could say are people who are younger than me who i uh, admire for whatever their skills and and uh and beliefs are i i basically just try to take the best elements of everybody that i come across in my life and have an appreciation for those strengths uh, of character and qualities that make people who they are and see in what ways i can apply it to making myself a better person so like you know, there isn't one particular like, oh, oh, like this teacher from my high school or right, this, right. you know, this this person in, in my career who I look up to, who I've always followed uh, because there, yes, there are, you know, generic answers like that that I can think of. But um, I'm, I'm my, my role models are just the people that I am lucky enough to spend my life with. No doubt. Oh, no doubt. Well said. Definitely. Definitely. Well said. Well said. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, personally, I love how we throw creepy questions to like some, some deep shit like that. So uh, yeah. <laughs> that's that's great, man. That's great. I, I love that answer. Um, let's see who who do we have up next? Who's up next? Dave, was back on me. Yes, yeah, sir. It's on you, sir. Like you better come with some good shit, man. Because uh, okay, it's, it's great questions going right now. Yeah, no, I, I don't know how I can compete here. So, Matt, um, with Zach Levine not making the all-star team last year. <laughs> hey, man. Oh, my bad. You just Damn. can't get it out, Damn. man. You just oh, can't man. get it out. Oh, Anything but. <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh, my bad. Of, oh. Cor of course, this this kind of BS is coming from the guy who looks like he spends his life at a gym. Come on, man. Your, your arms look like they're about to explode out of that tiny shirt. Come on. <laughs> well, tell him that. <laughs> okay. This, this is a real question here for you. What do you prefer, black Michael Jackson or white Michael Jackson? Oh my God, is that even a question? Yeah. What? Black yeah. Michael Jackson. Hey, amongst the community, that's some serious shit, bro. Like, hey, yeah, you, you gotta choose wisely how you answer this. There's a lot of bad fans. Okay, I mean, I'm 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 not gonna pretend to be some like Michael Jackson expert. As as a white guy, I listened to some of his music growing up, and I liked some of his music, but I've never like dared to be in the know on the Michael Jackson experience and how he relates to black culture. But personally, I liked his music better when he was younger and still black. I thought it was better music. <laughs> I thought his music got worse as he aged and got whiter. Gotcha. And then, you know, I, I, I don't know what topics are off limits or whatever, but also, like, the younger MJ, who was still black, also, like, the world didn't know about the various questionable elements of his character yet. Right. Whether you're talking about the time he spent with people's children or dangling babies off of balconies, like, right, no. Right, right, right. Just give me Thriller MJ, give me Jackson 5 MJ. Man, I mean, like you, you kind of, you kind of leading us down the path. So I'm just gonna say it: the the more the the crazier he got, the lighter he got. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know. So you know, yeah. you, I mean, all the viewers out there, the the 1.8 million, we got 1.8 million viewers right now. Yeah, um, the oh, 1.8 wow. million viewers we got Damn. right now, they can they can make their own decision. So I'm just saying, yeah. I'm just putting it out there. I'm just putting it out there. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna tell you what happened, man. <laughs> Mike it's, used to be wound up and real uptight, and somebody just came to him and said, "Mike, you need to lighten up." And he just <laughs> way too far. He didn't stop. Literally, <laughs> literally. <laughs> Come on, Lee. Sound about right. Sound about right. Sound about right. All right, I think we're gonna roll to the next question. Oh, that was a little rough. Um, <clears throat> We're going to go to John. Johnny Dangerous. What you got, sir? I mean, you guys are having some great questions, man. Yeah, for real. I, I'm trying to keep it real simple. But uh, Matt, what is one controversial opinion that you have? Just one controversial oh, opinion. Controversial opinion. Um, okay. Uh, I think that I, I'm not one to tell people how to live their lives. Uh, you know, religious beliefs, political leanings, as long as you're not messing with other people's liberties and freedoms and not telling someone else how to live their life. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't give a fuck what you do and what you believe. 
That being said, I think that all vegans and vegetarians are fucking stupid. Like, oh, no. No. I, no. I, no. I understand. No. Yes. Here we go. I understand that we are in a time where everybody's concerned about, uh, you know, global warming and climate change and, and like the, the meat industry is terrible for the environment and there are a million reasons to cut meat out of your life and like, oh, I find my protein from like moss growing on this rock or what the fuck ever. <laughs> I mean, we, we all, we all are lucky enough to have been like birthed in a time when humans are the top of the food chain. Unless you're like voluntarily swimming with sharks or like, you know, p picking a fight with a bear in the woods, humans are the top of the food chain. Right. And meat is delicious. And guess what? We won't be at the top of the food chain for long. The human experiment might, might end like, you know, next week, next year. Who knows? So live it up while you can. Meat's delicious. Vegetarians and vegans are stupid. And I know a lot of people don't like when I say that, but that's how I feel. Hey, when he first started answering the question, it sounded like the beginning of a Michael Jackson song. Like, we got the he just went, you know, I'm bad. And I'm like, God, no, oh, I wasn't uh, expecting it. I love I it, think, though. It was I think our resident vegetarian, Jeff A. Smith, should uh should, should respond to Matt. Yeah. Oh, no, did I offend yeah. somebody? No, no, no. And I don't even got no fire for him. Like, I, I, I've i been a vegetarian for four years, and I I, st I do think meat is really good. So I wasn't <laughs> even, I'm not even right. going to, you know, uh, dis disagree with, with, with that point. There's a, and, and my wife's a vegetarian, too. She became a vegetarian because she didn't, she doesn't like the way animals are slaughtered, and I respect that. Me, I like to challenge myself. I wanted to see if it would make me feel better. Um, just you know, better, more energy, that type of thing. Once I stopped eating meat, tried it out, did a test run, I started to feel ten times better. So I decided to run with it. So well, what um, if so you I like don't... me and I'm trying to I'm trying to feel bad at all times? <laughs> <laughs> like, like I said, you know, I I am sure that so if I, I ate less red meat, I would be a healthier individual. Yeah. I just don't care because it's delicious. Right, right, right. <laughs> and right. Yeah, like good for good for your wife. Yes, yeah, meat is murder, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> you know what? I I feel it's way better time. about throwing some ground beef on my flat top. And that being murder, then like, you know, I'm not out here murdering other people. No, yeah, I just yeah. like eating cows and pigs and chickens. Yeah, it ain't cannibalism. I got you. I got you. I got you, Matt. Hey, no <laughs> offense taken, man. No offense taken. No holds barred. You, Jeff, do you yes. eat kale? Yes. It's disgusting. How? how? It's disgusting. Well, I saute it, man. I put some hot sauce on it because I got to, you know what I'm saying? I do a little something. <laughs> Tell them the truth, Jeff. You just had a kale milk cereal this morning <laughs> i actually mix uh kale and other things with my because i'm a vegetarian so i still eat dairy and eggs so with uh a, high, a highly uh protein packed breakfast i always add kale and bell peppers and mushrooms to my eggs to my omelets and stuff like that so so yeah yeah but if you if you if i'm, I'm do i get a piece of kale to figure it like mm, this is a chip no i don't eat kale like that so it's, it's mixed with something you know, dows and salad dressing, whatever the case may be. So. Right. So, so basically, what you just described <laughs> is hiding the gross flavor of this food with better flavors from other stuff. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. C congratulations. I just prefer to eat food that actually tastes good the way it comes. <laughs> <laughs> and Jeff used to weigh three hundred seventy-three pounds. Like, <laughs> now he's like one sixty. So, yeah. for real. No, 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 no. I did. I did go. For like, dude, mad respects. <laughs> <laughs> I, I take back from, all the uh, shit that I just said. <laughs> right, right, right. I did, I did go from one ninety to one fifty five, though. So I mean, but yeah. <laughs> I, I haven't been one ninety since. And I, when my metabolism works. Most most of my childhood, I was actually like a pretty overweight kid, and like I was all round, and like I hated the fact that I grew up chubby and didn't like it, and. And then all of a sudden, like in college, I just had this crazy growth spurt. Uh, I basically weighed the same from when I was eight to eighteen. It was just differently dispersed, and uh, and I, I'm just waiting for that day when the other shoe drops and my metabolism slows down, and then I will balloon up to 400 pounds for sure. <laughs> it's happening. Then you're gonna be forced. <laughs> then Matt Karma will come around, and you will be forced to become <laughs> a be vegan or vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the day I check out. <laughs> <laughs> <Just fucking> them out. <laughs>
See y'all later. We're going to talk on the steak. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the biggest meat you got. <laughs> oh, 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 uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Yikes. Uh-uh. Hey, look, look, Dave has take that back. Take that back. Yeah, I can take that one. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. We we having too much fun. I'm a, I'm a, I have a real serious question to ask. Um Okay. <clears throat> um whew, like I gotta take a deep breath before I ask this one. Um are you a juice slash soda guy or a Kool-Aid guy? I mean straight up. This, this is serious uh, shit, bro. Remember your audience too. Like look who, look at look around the screen. Look who you're I, talking I to. See. So I'm, I see. I'm aware. I'm aware of my surroundings. <laughs> but okay, I, I've like never been huge on Kool Aid. I was, however, a big fan. Do you guys remember Mondo? Those little yeah. drinks that like, yep. yeah, you know, yeah, like a yeah. Of Kool Aid, yeah. and they had like the yeah. plastic like twist yeah. twist off caps. Me and my friends were all about Mondos back in the day. Like okay. at the end of our, you know, like Pee Wee so- Pee Wee uh, soccer game, cracking open a Mondo. Well my my bigger issue though is that you you said juice slash soda as if that's yeah. some like usual <laughs> category. Yeah, it is. It is. Those like, are two completely different things. I mean, but com- in comparison to Kool Aid, <laughs> it's like Kool Aid is is Kool Aid is far left. If you start going with juice, like that's kind of like well, actually, I, I would say soda is kind of like down the middle. But when you start getting into juice, like that's some uppity shit. That's some far right shit. So like I, far I didn't right. Know. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> juice is far shit. right. So, oh. so I, I just want to know, yeah. like you know, I, I you I just you just see people it. like holding pictures of OJ and apple juice and all the MAGA rallies. <laughs> it's crazy. It's exactly. out of control. Exactly. Twenty twenty. Just when we thought twenty twenty couldn't get any crazier. <laughs> 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 well, man, I, sir, I don't want to choose juice if it has that connotation. I didn't know that juice had that connotation. Hey, hey Matt, Matt, speak your truth, bro. Speak your truth. I, I won't judge you. The one point, oh, we got 1.9 million people now. The, the 1.9, 1. 9, they might judge you, but not Damn, us. we got to get locked on in your guys' network. For real. Yeah, and, and that's all for pre record. You're <laughs> <laughs> not even live right now. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I mean, I like, dude, you know, juice is fine. I've, I've never been a big soda drinker. Like, I have a lot of vices, but that's one that I kind of cut out when I was younger. Um, I, I will occasionally have, like, a Coke or a root beer if I'm, like, hitting up a drive through on a road trip. And I'll be like, oh, yeah, you know what hit the spot right now is, like, a Barks root beer. Um, but... I mean, I like. Can I create my own category? Because the answer, instead of juice slash soda, would be like coffee slash beer. That those are my two yeah, beverages. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Now, I mean, okay. where does that where does that fall on the political sort of scale, though? Like, where is that at? <sighs> I'm in the middle, right? Everybody <laughs> drinks coffee. Everybody drinks beer. Yeah, he's a yeah. centrist when it comes to drinks. JD, I just realized after what you just said, my, my refrigerator is conservative as hell. I need to go and <laughs> cast my ballot. You didn't, you didn't know that about yourself. You didn't know and that about yourself. Immediately. Damn. My fridge is about to vote for David Perdue in the Georgia runoffs. <laughs> <laughs> my refrigerator conflicts with my own personal beliefs, man. That's not that's fucked up. Hey, and, and, you, and you're a fucking vegetarian, bro. bro. I got kale and juice in that motherfucker. Wow. <laughs> you, yeah, you better go back. Throw it out. You, you better go back, re, re, reevaluate yourself, bro. Reevaluate uh, full, yourself. Full disclosure, I haven't had Kool-Aid in probably over 10 years. Yep, wow. That says a lot. It says a lot about <laughs> you now. It's all coming out here tonight, Jeff. That, that says is, a lot man. about your life, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you sound like you on that. That path to Michael Jackson. Right? <laughs> is, is this the part where Jeff gets disbanded from y'all's crew? Like, yeah. You know what? If we go back to episode zero, he's been getting lighter and lighter each episode. Oh yeah. my god! Oh no! Just saying, we can we can go back. The tape's there. Check the tape. Huh? Check the tapes. He, he's about to make a completely unintelligible music video with his sister. That's a bad song. That makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, he do have a younger sister. <laughs> Hey, oh, if man. we swap positions right now between Matt and Jeff, we probably wouldn't be able to tell who's who. Yeah. <laughs> Both of y'all got your hats on backwards. 
Uh-huh. Yep. There's a reason why we're on the bottom of the screen. Huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> that was divine intervention. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's, let's focus, Jeff. <laughs> it's on you, bro. Okay, okay. Let me let me uh, <laughs> get my shit back. All right. So, if you could have dinner with one person, dead or alive, who would it be? <sighs> oh my gosh. Um. Well, what one? like selfish celebrity wish answer would definitely be Chris Farley. Mm. Um, like Great. I was obsessed with Farley growing up SNL, his movies, like, like Tommy boy. I can't tell you how many times I've watched that movie. Um, especially like being an overweight kid. Like I told you guys, like, like the fat funny man really resonated with me. Yeah. Um, yeah. and guy. Go ahead. also, you know, just being, uh, somebody who was from the Midwest. You know, he was originally a Wisconsin guy, but came and like made a name for himself at Second City. And uh, before I got into sports media, my my main uh, background was in, in acting and performance. That's what I went to school to study. It's what I did for my first five or six years out of college. Uh, and I always just worshiped the talent that Farley had and was so heartbroken um, when he passed away when I was still just a kid. And I, like all of the people that talk about the, the demons that come along with being, you know, the the the, the sad clown that only people want to see the happy clown, um, and the way that I kind of saw that inner torment in him, even in his comedic performances, I would love to just sit down and have a meal with that dude. And also, the bonus would be getting to see Chris Farley eat a meal because when you hear people talk about how that dude ate, like yeah. I I love to stuff my face, but I would have loved to see Chris Farley eat a meal. Um, and then second answer would be my maternal grandfather. Okay. Um, because, uh, of my four grandparents, he was the only one who had passed away before I was born. And, uh, so I never really got, uh, never got a chance to get to know him, but just from some of the stories that my mom and and her siblings and, you know, my aunts and uncles have told me and my, my siblings over the years about who my grandfather was a, a guy that I sadly never met. I would love just, you know, to sit down with him and have a, from what I heard, a guy who enjoyed a cocktail or two at dinner, I would love to sit down and have a martini or two with him. Martinis aren't my drink, but they were his drink from what I hear. So uh, uh, getting to know a family member that I never got a chance to get to know. That's no doubt. Oh, yeah, no, great oh, answers, no. man. Very yeah, profound. great answer, man. Great answer. Uh, Dave, <clears throat> what you got there? Okay, man, let me ask you here. This happens to all of us. So tread lightly here. Do you stop the microwave before it beeps or open it after it beeps? Oh, okay. Yeah, this is a big yeah. deal for me. Yes, it is. I I absolutely open it before it beeps. Um, it like unless I have forgotten the microwave is on and I have to or I have to run out of the kitchen to do something else. I I would say ninety seven percent of the time I open that microwave door as it goes from two down to one on the clock. Um, Because I just like the microwave beeping sound is annoying and nobody needs to hear that. And if your food's done microwaving, you don't need the beeps to to, like confirm that the microwave has functioned. Um, But the even bigger pet peeve for me is, yes, I, I open the microwave before the beeping and the clock gets to zero, but then I make sure to hit the clear button Mm. So that it goes back to the clock function on the microwave, yeah. and not mm-hmm. still just on the count that has been paused. Yeah, yeah, that's nasty. Even on one second. That's nasty. <laughs> when I like, I've had roommates who are like, "Oh, I'll definitely open the microwave before the clock hits zero because it's done whatever I'm microwaving is finished." But then they just leave their like unfinished countdown yeah. on the screen of the microwave, and, yeah. then, and like I look at the microwave and I want to see a clock. I don't want to see their unfinished countdown. So yeah, I'm very bad. particular about that stuff. Mm. Dirty motherfuckers, man. man. Dirty <laughs> unsanitary. Just selfish. So you know? when you find yourself in the middle of a phone conversation, you'll be talking like, yeah, hold on, hold on, wait a minute. Who the hell let that microwave be? <laughs> <laughs> hey, sorry about that. Hold on, man. I'm going to have to call you back. <laughs> 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 You do that, man. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a trigger. <laughs> Microwave PTSD. 
Raw it's real, man. It's real. Chapter. <laughs> wow. All right. Um, I mean, looking looking at my watch, you know, I think we should we should kind of wrap this up. But uh, okay. uh, you know, we, we like to ask certain mm-hmm. questions, like regardless of who the guest is, I think we're gonna have certain questions that we ask to everyone. So, you know, maybe the ones in the middle might rotate a little bit, but the first one and last one, we're gonna make sure we ask that to everyone. So uh Johnny Dangerous uh is 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 your world, bro. Um, I know you're gonna have to come with a uh a very good and thought provoking question to, to to ask Matt before we end things tonight. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Last question. I'm gonna give it to you like Morpheus from Matrix. Oh. All right. Matt, there is a blue pill and a red pill. The blue pill allows you to change one thing from your past, and the red pill allows you to alter one thing from the future. Which one would you choose and what would you change? Man. Great Morpheus impression, by the way. That was, that was spot on. F- Fishburne would be proud. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we we got we to gotta do something together because I do a pretty decent Keanu myself. So, great laugh. That's 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 for the next time y'all we, we sit down and chat together. I'm not gonna use I'm not gonna use that card now. Uh, so, okay, so blue pill is past, red red pill is future. Yes, sir. Okay, which one? I would not. I would not take the red pill um, because I like the idea of the future being unknown. Mm. Um, mm. You know, some people might say, "Oh, I'll I'll, I'll pick this." you know, thing that I can nail down and know that's going to happen in my future, whether it be about my career, my personal life, uh, you know, like, oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to make this amount of money. I know that I'm going to have this many kids, whatever, whatever. Like, dude, like the excitement about life is not knowing what the hell's going to happen tomorrow. That's right. Um, and honestly, like as, as tough as this past year has been for everybody, that's still what gets me out of bed every day is, is not knowing um, and the excitement that comes along with that. So I wouldn't want to ruin that in any way, even if it was getting to choose what happens to me at some point down the road. Yes, sir. So ruling that out, I would have to say that I would take the blue pill and change one thing about my past. Um, and that's hard. Um, you know, obviously mis- making mistakes uh, is, is a huge part of also evolving and living your life. I've, I've made plenty. I don't need to go into detail, but I've certainly made plenty. Uh, but I don't know if I would change any of them. Um, I guess if there's one thing that I could, if I could go back and change about my past, it would be um, keeping my my cousin with me. Um, my cousin, who's a near and dear friend of mine, in addition to being a family member, passed away uh, back when we were both 28 years of age. He was born with a, a severe heart condition, had a lot of surgeries throughout his youth, um, and had a lot of his youth taken from him because he was, uh, you know, not bedridden, but just not in very good health. Uh, and then in his late teens and early 20s, he really, like, you know, overcame those health issues and, and started to really live and thrive um, and, and not just survive, but, but truly thrive. He was an artist. He was a musician. He was incredibly inspirational to me in so many ways. Uh, And unfortunately, um, you know, his his number was called uh, when we were actually uh, hanging out together in my apartment in Chicago. Um, Something that was unpredictable, but certainly possible given his various health conditions. And uh, I, you know, I'm certainly still inspired by by his memory and I I try to write by it, but I miss him every day. And if there's something about my past I could change, it would certainly be still having him here with me today. Man. Yeah, that's, that's that's a powerful answer, man. Yeah, that's a powerful answer. Too, definitely. Wow. And I, I think I think a lot of times as 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 people, you know, life a, a lot of times is filled with, um, you know, things that make you laugh, things that make you cry, and I think it's really important for us to hold on to those things, even even when they're they're bad. The, the 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 bad moments are things that you can grow from that you can learn from and they also affect the way that you deal with things as you progress forward so i know that your cousin has been able to um you know guide you to the success that you're able to have now man so um i'm i'm just glad that you know you were 
willing to 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 share something deep like that, bro. Like we we really yeah, appreciate that, man. Yeah, for real. Yeah, and well said. I appreciate that. Um, you know, that's 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 what this shit is all about, right? You know, we we can all talk about. Oh, you know, well, I, I'm not going to say their name because it's, it's forbidden. Dave. You know what you're talking about. <laughs> People can talk about hobbies and sports all day, but honestly, you know, the, the real shit is the real shit that connects us all. Yes, sir. One hundred percent, man. And that's to me, that's what the goal of you know um, anything but is is to give you know an opportunity to people like yourself to be able to talk about the shit that's real and to also get some jokes off to have fun and i think that's you know hopefully that's what we were able to accomplish tonight man and um you know as as we go ahead and end things um i'm just glad that you were able to 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 jump off with us bro um can you let everybody again you know know how they can contact you um you know uh what exactly you know maybe you can talk about some projects you might have going on um from here on out i know right after you guys got canceled on uh nbc sports chicago i shot a i shot a tweet to you and said like man y'all can do this shit on youtube like i'll still watch like i mean I'm, I'm really hoping that you know you guys got some stuff in the works but yeah go ahead and um you know um let everybody know what you got going on right now bro yeah well and you know thank you for that jeremy uh it was honestly overwhelming when when John and Dave and I made that announcement, um, you know, back in November, once we got the word that we wouldn't be back at NBC this season, the amount of people uh, who who came forward to say that they loved our show and and were so sorry to hear that it was not going to come back, but more importantly, we're saying, wh where else can we do this? Where else can y'all do this? Because we, ha you guys have to keep doing this because we enjoy it so much. It, it honestly meant so much to all three of us. So. There are some things in the works between me and Dave and John uh, to, to keep the three of us together on some platform for this upcoming uh, fill in the blank name of sports team season. Uh, and uh, I'll keep you posted on that. We're, we're, uh, we're toying with doing some of these preseason games on hot mic. So in the near future, as soon as Friday, uh, when they play, uh, stay tuned for that. We might even have a special guest uh, for oh. our Friday episode oh. along with uh, some Bulls hot mic action. Uh, and for, for Bears fans who aren't yet finished torturing themselves, Big Dave and I are, are doing, you know, Bears games on hot mic as well. Uh, and then, of course, me and my guy Jordan Malley are still uh, doing Locked on Bulls five days a week, Monday through Friday, bringing uh, those crazy Bulls fans the content that they uh, require and desire and, you know, ramping up for a new exciting season. So there's, there's uh, plenty on deck in the world of sports. Uh, <laughs> but uh, again, to all of you guys, thank you so much for inviting me. This was so much fun. Uh, I would happily come back on anytime. Doing what you're doing, this is an awesome idea for a podcast for a show, um, and it was it was truly truly enjoyable. So thank you so much for having me. Oh man, like like I said, bro, this is a blast, man. Um, I, I, man, I, I guess it just ended. All right, everybody, um, if you like what you see, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, jump off live on YouTube. Just search for that. Um, we have a live show that we do every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Central where we discuss like, you know, current events, like uh, not just, you know, uh, you know, uh, we don't talk about just sports. Like we talk about everything like, you know, politics, news, like real, real stuff. Yeah, um, that show, right net. <clears throat> exactly. 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 We don't curse because, you know, we kind of on a network a little bit. So, you know, we try to keep it keep it PG on there. But um, uh, like I said, 8 p.m. Central Time is where you can find that show. Um, you can find it on uh, YouTube uh, by searching for Jump Off Live. Also, um, if you download the Zingo TV app, which is on iOS and the Google Play Store, you can find us on there. Go to the Barn Burner Network, which is channel 250, um, and you can find us there. Um, that's where we have our replays of our shows every week. Um, so, yeah. For, for for Jeff, DJ, Johnny Dangerous, and yours truly, thanks again for watching Jump Off Live Presents Anything But. Matt, thank you very much, sir, once again. Yes, sir. And, thank uh, you, guys. You know, as we, as we go off, make sure you just jump off.